Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar here. Now, one of the most popular trends when it comes to watchmaking and I think really catering to the enthusiast is looking at vintage inspired dive watches. And I don't think there's really any shortage of watches of this type, but we definitely see quite a bit being loaded into the marketplace. And for every gem of a watch that comes in this type of style, there's dozens that just come off very soulless and definitely just miss the mark. But today we're looking at two that maybe aren't as appreciated as much as some of the larger or more familiar uh, watches out there, perhaps like the Tudor Black Bay, but also offer, I think, a unique package and are two of my favorite in the price ranges that they represent with the Oris Diver 65, as well as the Rado Captain Cook. Let's take a closer look at these two watches. Now both this Oris and then also this Rado really fall in that $2,000 price range in our, I would say diver-esque style watches, not dive watches that you probably would first grab for when trying to do a deep sea plunge here. Uh, more really catering to the design aspect and then pulling from, of course, both of these brands archives from the 1960s and developing a very tasteful retro design in a modern package. Now in this video, I definitely wanna show kind of more side by side, maybe some things to point out as we're going through just the wearability, the movements, the dial designs and things of that sort. And at the end, kind of give pros and cons or just which watch is better for which type of individual and what are maybe some final thoughts that should be at least on your radar when looking to get one of these watches. As I find many people that maybe are going for a watch of this ilk uh, would be looking at these two watches uh, as maybe two really solid options to go for. Now, before we jump into this video, I do wanna make a introduction to a new feature on our site, which is authorized pre-own at teddybaldestar.com. So this is a brand new thing that we're doing where we actually have for a select group of brands offering really incredible condition watches uh, on a pre-owned basis. They're all actually sourced from the brands themselves, coming with a warranty, uh, and are of course all tested before being sent out to you, and then also available at a discounted price. As of right now, I don't really know anybody else that is doing this, so it's a really great opportunity to get a great deal on a fantastic watch. So definitely check it out in the description below, and also a full authorized dealer of Rado and Oris watches. So if you like what you're seeing today, uh, definitely head over and check out the different options that we have in both of the Diver 65 range as well as the Captain Cook range. And if you do buy either of these watches from TeddyBaldestar.com, use promo code ORISRADO at checkout and you can get any free strap on the site included with your purchase. Just add the watch, add the strap to your cart and you'll be good to go. Now to begin here, let's first look at these two watches. Now the Rado Captain Cook that we're gonna be looking at here is the 42 millimeter option. And then for the Oris Diver 65, the 40 millimeter option. Now for the Captain Cook, we have a green dial variant coming in at $2,000 for the price, case size 42 millimeters, case thickness of 12 millimeters, lug width of 21 millimeters, lug to lug of 48.2 millimeters, water resistance of 200 meters, movement is an automatic ETA C07611, bezel is ceramic, and the crystal is sapphire. Now for the Oris Diver 65 at 40 millimeters, we have a price of $2,200 on this bracelet, thickness of 12.8 millimeters, lug width of 20 millimeters, lug to lug of 48 millimeters, water resistance of 100 meters, movement is an automatic Sleda SW200, bezel is aluminum and crystal is sapphire. Both with looking at the Oris Diver 65 as well as the Captain Cook, you have a myriad of different options as a consumer, both in case sizes as well as when looking at the different materials. And looking in recent memory, you probably could perhaps bring up the bronze Captain Cook with a burgundy dial, which really just looks fantastic. And looking towards Oris's collection, the newly unveiled Carl Bashir Caliber 401 within. But for the sake of this video, definitely wanted to keep it more towards the stainless steel options. Now, the reason why I chose both the 42 and the 40 millimeter was generally just given the wearability of both of them. I find that they wear very similar uh, for the most part. Uh, there's slight differences as we go through this, which we'll definitely mark out, but uh, the Rado ultimately wears smaller than the 42 and the Oris wears, I would say, maybe true or close to maybe being a little bit larger than what that 40 millimeters would indicate. Both of them also are offered in different dial sizes. So you do have a lot at your disposal there. And before I uh, get some comments about why did I choose the Oris Diver 65 compared to the Aquas, uh, really just came down to the retro styling. I think for somebody that's looking for a watch of this style, uh, the Oris Diver 65 is definitely more in alignment with what the Captain Cook is going for. But uh, just wanna mention just the Aquas as well here at the get-go as another great option, but I think slightly 
slightly more modern in terms of its style. Now, last year I reviewed the Captain Cook 42 millimeter and the 37 millimeter in one video, and I can link to that in the description down below if you've not seen that. But in that video, I was really getting ready to jump and state my preference towards the 37 millimeter, but the 42 on the Captain Cook overall wears, again, much closer to a 40, 41 millimeter case, thanks to the relatively compact 42 millimeter lug to lug measurement, as well as that thicker ceramic bezel that will take from the total of that 42 millimeter diameter. Now, the Aorus on the other hand, where a bit more true again to that 40 millimeter case with a lug to lug that basically mirrors what is exactly coming with that Captain Cook 42 while being paired with a much thinner rotating bezel along the outside coming in an aluminum insert. The Captain Cook does wear slightly larger across the wrist with that 42 so you do feel it in that aspect but their relative presence across the wrist is quite close in actuality. Now the area of thickness though is going to be the strongest point of separation between these two. The Captain Cook being nearly a full millimeter thinner and having a much more angled lug design that will make it feel even thinner when strapped on, but both offer the use of a box sapphire crystal to really kind of emulate those vintage crystal designs from say the 1960s, both featuring anti-reflective coating, which we can get into a bit more when discussing the dial designs. Now the case of the Captain Cook, it comes in a consistent polished case while the Diver 65 is brushed across the case and the lugs and it has polishing across the side of the case. Between the lugs, we both have the brands taking on a retro style in regards to the bracelets with the Oris opting to go for a three length riveted style bracelet that tapers down from 20 millimeters all the way down to 14 millimeters. The Rado comes paired with a beads of rice style bracelet and offering quick release bars on the bracelet to swap in additional straps on the Captain Cook without the use of tools. Both the bracelets wear comfortable on the wrist coming with pin adjustable lengths and a two button release clasp. Yet the Oris gets major points when it comes to the inclusion of five micro adjustment points while the Rado has absence of any micro adjustments in the clasp. You will need to use a tool to adjust the micro adjustment within the Oris class, but the fact that it even includes this and the Rado does not definitely does take away. But overall, these are good bracelets for the money. I think they wear very comfortably, but there is something to note there with the Rado with not having the micro adjustment. Jumping back to the central cases, they both follow a similar format with the crown locations at the three and unidirectional 120 click bezels along the outside of both of them. Now the crowns on both of these watches are of the screw down variety with the threading on the Rado feeling just a bit more premium, but it is lacking in the area of size compared to the Oris Diver 65. So it might be a little bit harder to get a grip when comparing it to the Oris. The severity of this will definitely depend on the size of your hands and what you're familiar with and comfortable with. Now, another thing we need to point out is the difference in water resistance here. So 200 meters when looking at the Rado Captain Cook and 100 meters when looking at the Oris Diver 65. And I know I can hear the typing happening already saying 100 meters of water resistance is not enough for a dive watch, but the ISO 6425 uh, just requirements only requires 100 meters of water resistance, which basically is the standard for a dive watch. So if it's good enough for that, it's probably good enough to be classified as a dive watch, uh, but it's still a significant difference between these two. I think for both people that would be looking in the directions of these watches, 100 meters is certainly sufficient, but you do get a lot of extra security with that 200 meters of water resistance with the Captain Cook with this particular variant. So definitely something to consider here. Looking back at the bezel inserts again, the Rado does come with that ceramic, high gloss ceramic insert that will be better at resisting scratches than the aluminum insert of the Diver 65. But one note when looking at the Rado is it does actually not feature any inclusion of loom in the bezel, while the Oris is accompanied with a small loom pip at the 12. So if you are somebody that is looking for that traditional dive watch standard, uh, definitely gonna be wanting to have some loom in the bezel. But again, just knowing the style, the approach of both of these, I see that as lesser of a deal here. Casting across the dials are heavily domed sapphire crystals providing view of the dial elements underneath. Of the two pieces here, the Rado has a bit of a less prominent dome, which will offer a more consistent view at every angle, while the Oris will obfuscate and kind of distort some of the outside markers given the bubble design of the crystal. The Rado of the two definitely has a funkier, more eye-catching dial with subtle dial printing, a distinctive arrow hour hand, tasteful rectangular loomed indices, a silver chap after ring framing the dial nicely and the Captain Cook anchor above the Rado signature that actually is weighted and will freely rotate. So it's a really cool feature when you're looking at their automatic watches. And I think many people when they first notice that that is moving, it's really a fun little trick. 
The date window is neatly cut out with a bit of a three-dimensional architecture at three o'clock position. It has a date wheel in white with red printing, which is a nice touch. Overall, the style is a very faithful update to the classic model it emulates. It's very retro, yet a bit more avant-garde with its design uh, compared to the Oris Diver 65. But I think that's a good way to just describe Rado in general. They're very just uh, daring in terms of the materials that they use, definitely using a lot of ceramic, uh, as well as just kind of some open design uh, formats. So this is certainly more tame for them, but of the two here, definitely the one that I think is a bit more flashy. Compared to the Rado, the Oris Diver 65 also is extremely faithful to its historic watch that it really draws its design from and is quite a bit more restrained with very small dial text. The deep blue color of this dial is charming and looks almost black depending on the light conditions as well as the angle in which you're looking through that heavily domed crystal. The markers on the watch are applied, coming in a steel frame outline, and the handset is more of a baton pencil style. In a more symmetrical move compared to the Rado, the Oris features a date window, white on black this time, and is featured at the six o'clock position, a feature that makes this dial a bit more symmetrical and balanced. Some might take issue to the fact that this dark blue dial doesn't necessarily match the black bezel insert or heavy use of faux markers, but personally, I think it comes together quite well. On the subject of Loom, both the Captain Cook and the Rado feature Super Luminova within the markers and the hands. To put it simply, both of them shine with very similar incandescence with the Loom in the hands of the Oris being the stronger than that of the Rado. But on the other hand, given the larger surface area of the markers on the Rado, it is easier to recognize the markers in darker environments. That said, no real winner here in terms of their shine. Looking at this $2,000 price range, you're basically always going to expect getting kind of an off-the-shelf third-party movement from a place like Eta or Salita. And that's kind of what we're getting here, but there is quite a bit of difference between these two movements when comparing them side by side. And I think definitely one of the stronger points of consideration when trying to make a decision here. First, with the more general of the two calibers, the Oris Diver 65 comes with a Salita SW200, which is, along with the Eta 2824 that it closely emulates, is one of the main calibers you'll see with Swiss watches in this price range. Despite being hidden from view, Oris does dress the movement up slightly with its custom red rotor that has become a bit of a calling card. But apart from that, you're basically getting your run-of-the-mill Swiss movement that offers peace of mind and easy serviceability and regulation. It operates at 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz, features hacking and hand winding, hacking stopping the second hand when pulling out the crown to the farthest position, and has a power reserve of 38 hours. Now for the Rado Captain Cook, Rado utilizes an ETA C07611, which is one of the perks of being part of a large group like Swatch, unlike an independent brand such as Oris. Now this movement is derived from the same DNA as the ubiquitous ETA28242, yet is modified to a reduced beat rate of 21,600 vibrations per hour from the traditional 4 hertz 28,800 vibrations per hour in order to cultivate an extended 80 hour power reserve, maximizing the power stored in that mainspring. But this movement does not feature regulator pins as it is laser regulated in the factory. So if you are trying to regulate this with a local watchmaker, there's definitely gonna be some more challenges involved here. While this is still a modified off the shelf mass market movement, the extended power reserve does make a powerful argument in terms of utility in your daily life. An 80 hour power reserve means you can comfortably wear this watch on Friday, uh, leave it there for the weekend and then pick it up Monday morning and the thing will still be ticking. And that's perhaps the biggest selling point when comparing these two. This is gonna operate again, 21,600 vibrations per hour, three Hertz, features hacking and hand winding and has that power reserve of 80 hours. Okay, so now to unpack and just some things to consider, maybe just a general checklist as we're looking at these two pieces, uh, what are the pros, what are the cons, where are the advantages of going one way versus the other? Ultimately, I think these are probably two of the best options if you're going for this vintage style dive watch in this price range. Uh, just starting out with wearability, really pretty much generally the same. I would say for the most people out there, the 40 millimeter Oris Diver 65, as well as the 42 millimeter Captain Cook will be the best option for many people out there. I think the 36 millimeter when it comes to the Oris Diver 65 is a little too small. And then you also have the 37 millimeter for the Rado, which is a little bit larger and I think could work on some more wrists, but still is a small dive watch. I think 37 millimeters is quite small when you factor in the thicker uh, ceramic bezel along the outside and, and uh, that 37 millimeter case. It is gonna be tough to pull off. The thickness though is something to point out. 
The Rado is substantially thinner, and I also think that's a byproduct of the case back on the Oris, kind of extending out a bit more. The Rado does wear a bit flatter on the wrist, so that is one point for the Rado. Now, when it comes to the area of bracelets, I think this is definitely going to be one where in, they're in the same class for sure, but definitely the styles are uh, vastly different. You have the riveted style bracelet as well as the beads of rice bracelet. I think the beads of rice is a little bit more comfortable on the wrist, but 20 millimeters in terms of the lug width compared to the Oris, which is 20 millimeters, that's gonna provide a lot of different options as well as the micro adjustment that's in the clasp of the Oris. So I think you really have to consider those two options there when looking in either direction of these uh, pieces. The other points of emphasis are going to be the bezels and the water resistance. First with the bezels, you have the choice of that high gloss ceramic, which I think is just a bit more eye-catching with the Rado versus the aluminum insert that's going to come on the Oris Diver 65 that does feature loom inside the bezel when the Rado does not. So you just have to weigh out your pros and cons there. And then 100 meters of water resistance versus the 200 meters of water resistance, Oris coming with 100 meters and Rado coming with 200 meters. That's, I think, a big deal and might be something to consider. If you want the extra uh, security, go with the 200 meters of water resistance on the Rado uh, or maybe consider the Aquas, for example. And then finally, movements. And I think this is probably going to be the number one consideration point for many people out there and just the power reserve difference. I think that is the number one point here to really just ponder when you're looking in the direction of these watches. 80 hours versus 38 hours, the Rado is doubling up that power reserve of the Salita SW200 in the Aura. So do you like the peace of mind with being able to regulate the movement yourself uh, very easily with the Salita? Uh, or do you like the 80 hour power reserve uh, that's coming with the Rado Captain Cook? For somebody that has had both 38 hour power reserve watches as well as ones with extended power reserves, it's definitely amazing to have that 80 hour power reserve or extended power reserve in day to day wear. It makes it a lot easier not have to set the time uh, and it's probably one of the most useful features that you can have on a watch. It does have a reduced beat rate, so it's, the sweep is not gonna be as clean as that 28,800 vibrations per hour on the Oris, but those are, I think, the things to consider and wrap up. Ultimately, I don't think you can go wrong with either of these, and I think they're perhaps the two best options in this price range for watches of this style. But guys, I'd love to see comments down below. Which one would you go for if you had the money, if you maybe even made the decision yourself? Which one did you opt to go for? Uh, please leave comments down below. Love to see what you guys have to say. Also, if you did enjoy the video and you like these comparison style videos, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. What comparison would you like to see in the future? I thought these were two great ones to do, but i uh, love to hear what you guys would uh, like to see from us in the future when it comes to these comparisons. I think these are fun to do. Definitely check out teddyballastar.com. If you are in the market for these watches, you like what you saw here today, uh, definitely take advantage of that promo code down below. Pick out any free strap with your purchase, Oris Rado at checkout. Uh, pick out any strap, add it to your purchase, and you'll be good to go. Full factory warranty for all the products that we carry. Uh, price match, so if you see one of our products for cheaper at another authorized dealer, uh, fill out the form, we'll give you a call. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate from our store goes right back into this content that we're creating here, helping to try to create a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. Also stay up to date with the content by following us on Instagram, see some cool photos of watches as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.